nothing and it went off and you got no, no, This member decapitated. It's probably because you're trying to hide something and make sure certain details don't come out. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is 10 to Life. If you are brand new stopping by for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy the case coverage today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. It's free guys. It just helps notify you when live streams happen and new case update videos get posted. And for those of you who are returning subscribers, you already know the deal. You know what it is we do here. So I don't need to explain it to you. You're seasoned. You get it. Today, we're going to be talking about an update in the Heidi Plank case. And for those of you who don't know, Heidi Plank is a 39-year-old woman who went missing on October 17th. The circumstances surrounding her disappearance are extremely bizarre. She was at her son's football game, left during halftime, never was seen from or heard from again, yet her dog was found at a high-rise apartment complex in downtown LA, 30 miles away from her home, later that evening, on the 28th floor also, and Heidi wasn't with the dog. And then later we found surveillance footage where it shows her walking the dog in that back alley of that apartment building earlier that day. So what brought her to that building? Who lives in that building? And where is Heidi? This morning, brand new details have emerged in this already very bizarre and confusing case. And we start to get a clear picture as to who Heidi allegedly may be, some interesting facts about her history, and we have some court filings, and I'm going to share those with you as well. So this case just got a heck of a lot more confusing, but let's break it all down, and I'm interested to hear your thoughts. And if you still want to catch up on the case and know all the details, I'm going to link that previous video in the description box below, and you can also just go to my page and back up and watch that. It's a quick, you know, 20-minute watch. Before we jump into the updates of today's case, let's have a quick word from today's sponsor. You guys already know that it is no secret I think there is an extremely high importance on mental health and Cerebral is a mental health platform that provides access to ongoing online prescriptions, medication management, counseling, and therapy for anxiety, depression, insomnia, and other conditions, all for a flat monthly rate. You can also get treatment for ADHD and bipolar and PTSD in certain states. What I love about Cerebral is Cerebral offers online convenience and complete privacy. You can do it all from the comfort of your own home when it's most convenient for you. Message your counselor at any time. It's like having your counselor in your pocket. And in most cases, you can see your provider ultra fast in as little as 20 minutes. Cerebral has a comprehensive online care model, and it's really designed for long-term care. It has your therapist and your doctor talking to each other, which normally doesn't happen in a traditional setting. Every situation is different, and Cerebral knows that, so you can start Cerebral with or without insurance. They offer a consistent, flat monthly rate at more affordable options than traditional therapy. I really wish I had something like this and a platform like this that I had access to when I was going through my mental health struggles, which I've talked about on this channel pretty openly, because it just makes it so convenient. You can talk to somebody quickly, you're in the comfort of your own home, you know it's secure and private. It really just, there's so much comfort in that, and I wish there was something like that available to me when I was going through my time. You start by filling out a short survey online, and it is really easy to fill out. You answer a few questions to help Cerebral understand your symptoms, and from there, you can choose to subscribe to one of three different membership options based on your needs, and your budget. Cerebral also offers a convenient mobile app, whether it's on Google Play or the App Store, whatever device you want to use, you can download the app. So guys, please take care of your mental health, and if you've ever been unsure and you're a little uncomfortable, Cerebral is definitely the platform for you to use. Again, it's secure, it's confidential, and it is so easy to use. So if you would like to take the next step in working on your mental health, click the link in my description box below, start the questionnaire, and get connected with a provider right away. Your first month starts at only $30, and guys, that is such an amazing price when it comes to your mental health. I mean, really, it's priceless, but for only $30, get started today. Thank you, Cerebral, for your service. You are absolutely amazing, and thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. And guys, thanks so much for understanding that sponsors are essential to the channel if we want to grow it to a place where I can give you true crime all the time. Now let's jump into today's case. 
So as I mentioned, this case hasn't really been talked about in a big way, and I'm not quite sure why, because this 39-year-old woman has now been missing for almost a month, and nobody seems to know where she is, what could have happened, and not only are the circumstances around her disappearance very interesting and odd and bizarre, but there was also some information released that was tied to her employer and how he's being investigated for fraud for, I believe it's $43 million. She was the bookkeeper, so could this have been foul play? I mean, there are so many questions. And now all of these new court filings just became public and more questions are out there. Heidi Plank was married to James Wayne and they married in 2008, but divorced just four years later after the birth of their son. And it was said that the couple fought for years over who should have the care of their son. And since 2017, they did have joint custody. Well, now child custody documents have been obtained by another news source and Those documents reveal that Heidi allegedly has a history of drug use, psychotic breakdowns, and other bizarre behavior. And I'm going to give you the summary here, and then I'm going to bring the documents on screen, and we're going to read it word for word together. Heidi's ex-husband, James Wayne, had requested custody of their son in 2015 in a declaration claiming that he feared that the boy was in immediate risk of harm by Heidi Plank, his mother. He also said, again, that his ex-wife has a history of acting out in very volatile ways. He included that she once checked herself into a psychiatric facility in 2015 and that Once she checked herself in, he was receiving very bizarre phone calls asking if he could take her home, saying that she was in a very scary place, also alleging that they were abusing her intimately. And when her ex-husband asked her why she felt that way, she replied and said, every time I sit down to pee, I have to poop. I feel like I have to poop, which I don't know what the correlation there is with SA, but a little bit unsettling and disturbing. In another one of the allegations that he has made, he says that later she had told him she needed to leave a Rite Aid because it was too intense and then repeatedly tried to feed him a plate of bacon as he was driving her home. She apparently just had a plate of bacon and was trying to force feed it to him in the car and he says that she reportedly appeared intoxicated. When they got to his house, he says that he went to go watch football on the TV while his ex-wife Heidi went into their son's room to play. And about an hour into them being in the room, he said he heard a very loud thud and a crash, but he said he didn't think to go into the room and check because his son was still laughing and he could hear that he was okay and he thought that maybe they were just playing. But a half an hour later, he says that their son came out and he said he was very excited, but also looked a little bit guilty and said, dad, you have to come see my room. My mom made a mess. So when he went into the room to check, he said that it was in complete chaos. And according to his statement, he says that she trashed their then four-year-old's bedroom before jumping out of the window and climbing onto a neighbor's roof semi-naked. Neighbors then called the police who came and found Heidi in a nearby backyard, partially clothed and shutting an electrical circuit breaker on and off. So not exactly what you would classify as regular behavior necessarily. Then reportedly two days later, she asked why she had a C-section scar saying that she never had had a child. Again, just, you know, sad, unsettling, and disturbing behavior and statements being made. Around Christmas 2015, apparently James took their son to a fat burger location, and the son told him that he couldn't be there because the last time he was there with his mom, they were kicked out after she had torn pictures off the wall and thrown them on the floor. In additional papers that were filed in 2016, he goes back and says that she has a history of acting out in those volatile ways. And again, we're going to go through the details and bring up those documents and read them together in just a minute here. James also says that his son liked to play with a Nerf gun and that one time Heidi fired the toy straight into the son's face when he didn't have a mask on for protection. And when his son complained that she had hit him in the eye, she triumphantly told the boy, you should have had your mask on. So I can see where there would be a bit of growing concern for the welfare of their shared son. According to those court filings, Heidi also hated that their son didn't pay enough attention to her, once completing a Lego building with him and then throwing the finished product against the wall. And now these allegations become, in my opinion, a little bit more disturbing and some red flags continue to go up. 
They also outlined that she attempted to make up for all of this behavior by being more of a friend to her son than a parent. And this is according to her ex-husband, James Wayne. In 2017, when their son was six years old, she and the boy were apparently playing with Nerf balls. She pulled her shirt down, exposing her cleavage so he could throw the balls down her cleavage. And in these court filings, James says that he found this behavior very inappropriate. And he says that when she saw me looking at her doing this, she immediately held up a cardboard paper in front of her. When the boy asked her to put it down, her response was so incoherent and irrelevant to their discussion that he noticed how odd she was being. And as we start to go through this again, it's like, you know, there's a gray middle area here, at least to me, as far as the behavior to what is truly scary and risky versus how sad it is if she is truly suffering from something mentally and I can see where all of this starts to add on and you of course your number one concern is your child but it was also said that James didn't want to revoke her full custody he just wanted her to have monitored visitation because he wanted her to still be allowed to see their son but again he was concerned for the welfare of his son and wanting to make sure that he was not only taken care of well but also not exposed to anything that could potentially be damaging. James also says that his ex-wife Heidi was addicted to amphetamine, specifically Adderall, and he claimed that she would go to three different doctors so she could get three separate prescriptions, making sure she always paid for two of them in cash so that her abuse would not be discovered, whether that be through insurance or some sort of data records, whatever that may be. He made it clear during the custody hearings that he, again, wanted his son to have a relationship with his mother, Heidi, but wanted to make sure that all of those visits were monitored, and he objected to any unmonitored visitation. He says, I feel her conduct has not shown that she has reached a level that keeps our son out of harm's way. Now, some are speculating that the ex-husband is involved somehow, where I don't know that I'm quite ready to jump to that conclusion, because by all accounts, it appears, although he has been filing court records, yes, for the well-being of his son it appears he still wanted them to have a relationship and he wasn't trying to fracture that by any means he just wanted to protect his son and make sure that those visits were monitored so I don't know that I'm in agreement that he is involved I personally think it's more likely if these allegations are true that perhaps Heidi has gone off on her own accord and done something or I still go back to the possibility of her business partner and some involvement of foul play. And the reason why is because that's the entire layer to this case. Her business partner, Jason Sugarman, is under investigation for that $43 million in fraud. And in another layer to this, Sugarman's business partner, Jason, is also currently serving a sentence of more than 15 years in federal prison in California for fraud as well. He was also ordered to forfeit $80 million when he was sentenced back in September of 2020. And if you watched my previous video, you saw that just a couple of days after Heidi went missing, the SEC contacted Heidi's ex-husband to ask questions about Jason Sugarman, the business partner of Heidi's who is under investigation for the $43 million in fraud. So that timing just seems extremely suspicious. Another unsettling detail that a lot of people are talking about is that days after Heidi disappeared, her business partner, Jason Sugarman, was seen on surveillance footage delivering a bag of muffins to Heidi's home. And this was just two days after she disappeared. So a lot are speculating, was he just trying to check up and test out the water, see what people knew, see what was going on? And they didn't feel as though it was necessarily an authentic and genuine pop in with the muffins. Now let's read some of those documents from all of the allegations that I just summarized previously, and let's go through those together. We start here where it's the declaration of James Wayne, and he says, I am the petitioner in this matter. If called upon as a witness, I could and would testify competently to the following facts, all of which are within my own personal knowledge and belief. I offer the within declaration in lieu of personal testimony in support of my request for emergency child custody and visitation orders. I offer this declaration in support of my request for order to my ex parte application to modify child custody and child visitation. And here we go into his need for relief. I am fearful of immediate risk of harm from the respondent to our child. As such, I respectfully request the court to hear my matter on the ex parte basis under Family Code Section 3064. On October 8th and the 11th, the respondent demonstrated acts that are damaging and dangerous to a child. I'm worried for the well-being of our son given respondent's recent conduct. As such, I am requesting that the court hear this matter today as I need emergency court orders to protect our son. 
As we go into the summary, I respectfully request that the court provides me with the following. Award sole legal and physical custody to me, the petitioner, no visitation pending further review by the court. And here we go into the background information. The respondent and I were married on August 9th, 2008. As a result of our relationship, we have a minor son, and this name has been redacted because he's a minor. His date of birth is November 4th, 2010. On November, or I'm sorry, on December 20th, 2012, respondent and I were divorced. Pursuant to our judgment, respondent and I currently share joint legal and physical custody of our son. Attached as Exhibit A and incorporated by reference is a copy of the judgment that was entered on December 20th, 2012. Factual background of ex parte needs. As discussed below, Below, on or about October 10th, 2015, respondent checked herself into a psychiatric facility. For the past few weeks, respondent has been suffering a deterioration of her mental condition leading up to a full psychotic break. On or about October 11th, 2015, respondent called me from the psychiatric facility and asked, can you please take me home? I'm in a scary place and they are abusing me. When I asked her why she felt that way, she indicated every time I sit down to pee, I have to poop. When I told her that she needed to stay, she started to ask me, why do I have a C-section? We don't have children. She indicated that she wanted to leave the facility. Thereafter, she hung up the telephone on me. Approximately an hour or so later, she called me back and left me a voicemail. At, attached as Exhibit B and incorporated by reference is a copy of the voicemail on a CD-ROM. In her voicemail to me, respondent indicated that it is her intention to stay at the facility. On or about October 8th, 2015, at 1 p.m., respondent asked me if I could pick up our son. Although it was her custodial agreed, I agreed without pause. Respondent advised me that she would be at place of work by 3.30 to pick up our son. She did not arrive until approximately 5.30 p.m., two hours later. When respondent finally did arrive around 5.30 p.m., I noticed that she seemed very stressed and slightly disoriented. She asked me if I would be willing to drive our son and her home. I advised her that I would drive them, but that they would have to wait until later when I finished with my last client because he was a hairdresser. Respondent asked me to give her money to take our son to dinner while they waited, and I obliged. Respondent and our son went to a restaurant down the street and came brought back approximately an hour later. When they arrived back at around 6.30 p.m., I noticed that she was very jittery and seemed nervous. When they arrived back, she turned to me and exclaimed, "'Isn't it so weird? I started to take things off the wall.'" The question caused me to pause as her conduct, conduct and demeanor seemed to be a bit suspicious. When I inquired as to what she meant, she did not respond coherently. Respondent has a history of substance abuse, so I have learned to be aware of her conduct and try to be aware of when and if she is using. When they got back, our son wanted to play cards, so we walked to Rite Aid, which is a few blocks away from my office. While we were walking, walking, she was arguing with our son and turned to me and said, will you please tell our son to hold my hand? When I asked why, she said, it's because it's dark out. I walked closer to them and put my hand on her shoulder and said, are you okay? When I put my hand on her shoulder, I noticed that her face started to crumple and she was crying. After a few seconds, she started to collect herself and we continued to walk. When we walked into the Rite Aid, she started shaking, went pale, turned to me and said, I can't be in here. It's too intense. We walked out of that store quickly. We all went to my car and I started to drive them to her apartment. When we got back, I watched her turn on the lights and go into her apartment. After they got in, I started to drive to my house. Before I even got home, the respondent called me and asked if I would come pick them up. When I got back to the respondent's house, she was standing outside with our son holding a plate full of bacon. The entire drive back home, she was offering bacon to me repeatedly and seemed slightly intoxicated. When we got to my house, the two of them went into our son's room and started to play. I was watching the football game, so I was in the living room. About an hour into their being in the room, I heard a very loud thud and crash. I didn't think to go into the room because our son was laughing and I could hear that he was okay. About 30 minutes later, around 9 p.m., our son came to me in the living room. He was very excited and looked a little guilty and said, Dad, you have to come see my room. My mom made a mess. Attached as Exhibit C are true and correct pictures of the damages caused by the respondent in my home on October 8, 2015. I followed our son into the bedroom and found the room in complete chaos. I looked around the room but noticed that she was no longer there and that the window was open. I looked out the window and could see what looked like her legs going over a fence. I yelled out to her, where are you going? To which she responded, this just isn't right. I went to my front porch a few minutes later to see if I could locate her from there. Just as I was walking out, two police cars pulled up to my house. An officer walked out of one car and asked me if I had an ex-wife, to which I responded yes. He advised me that a neighbor had called them and to respond as she was climbing on roofs and over fences in that neighborhood. 
A few minutes later, the second officer came out of the second car and said they had located her and that she was pretty messed up. He said that she had been located in someone's backyard, partially clothed, shutting an electrical circuit breaker on and off. Officers indicated that they were going to take her into custody on a 5150 or to jail for breaking and entering. I'm worried for our son's safety. I have personal knowledge of the fact that Respondent has a history of substance abuse throughout our marriage and after Respondent has admitted and discussed these issues with me. I strongly believe the Respondent was on drugs at the time she arrived at my house, and I believe her conduct demonstrates that she is not in control of her actions and consequently puts a risk to herself and our son. I want our son to have a relationship with his mother, and I always have done everything to ensure that they have a relationship. Nevertheless, I feel like her conduct has reached a level that puts our son in serious risk of harm. Now, as we go into child custody, I respectfully request the court to award me sole physical and sole legal custody of our child because it would be in the best interest of our child given respondent's recent conduct. Regarding physical custody, I believe it is in our son's best interest that I am his primary caregiver given the mother's recent conduct. I want to mention that over the past two years, I have personally observed how well our son has adjusted to living with me, spending more time with me, and how much happier he is on most weeks. Respondent will usually give our son to me earlier than she is supposed to. Legal custody. I feel that it is in our son's best interest that I am solely responsible for making the legal decisions until respondent receives treatment for substance abuse and individual therapy. So clearly a lot to unload here and really sad when you boil down to it, but also, yes, very concerning because there seems to be a pattern here. Now, to my knowledge, there hasn't been any recent documentation regarding more recent events than what was outlined in these court filings from 2015 and 2016. So we don't know what the behavior pattern has been like for the last four years, or I, I should say five years. But this does add an entire new layer to the case because the surveillance footage of her walking the dog in the alleyway outside of that apartment building, is that sinister? Is there a foul play? Did she leave the dog intentionally because she was perhaps having an episode or was it foul play because she also was on the 28th floor and something took place up there? Just recently, James Wade was awarded full custody of their now 11-year-old son after filing more documents last month because she had disappeared. And in those court papers, he says that he needed to put his son into therapy because he is completely distraught at his mother's disappearance. We are at the point where we have to expect the worst. And accordingly, I am requesting full legal and full physical custody so that I can legally enroll him into therapy immediately. This is an emergency. If we hear from authorities that Heidi has been kidnapped or has died, I fear that he will be extremely distressed and inconsolable beyond his current mental state. This just makes this case all the more confusing. But meanwhile, when you boil it down, at the end of the day, this 39-year-old woman is missing. She has disappeared for whatever reason that is and is now away from her son. So it is imperative that we continue spreading the word, spreading the missing flyers, and trying to find Heidi Plank. Her friends have said, as I mentioned in my previous video, that this is extremely unlike her, that she would never just up and willingly leave her son. So that's something to take into account as well. And again, going back to Money Talks, the $43 million investigation for fraud, is that looped in? There are just so many different facets now to this case that make it all the more confusing. And just to circle back to the sponsorship earlier in the video, this is, again, imperative why taking care of your mental health is just so, so important, guys. What do you make of these new documents and these new allegations outlined in this custody declaration? Let me know in the comments below. What do you still think happened to Heidi? I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Do you think that she possibly did just leave and she's suffering from some sort of psychotic break? Do you think that it still is possibly more likely that there's foul play involved due to the investigation into her business partner? What do you think is going on? Let me know in the comments below. I'm going to keep you guys updated as this case continues to break open and as we learn more and hopefully as we find more footage or find traces of Heidi's car, which is still missing, and learn more about what could possibly be going on. So if you want to stay updated on this case and future cases, don't forget, hit the subscribe button. Again, guys, it's completely free. Some people have asked me, does it cost money? It absolutely doesn't. Just press subscribe and you'll be notified when updates happen as they happen in real time. Also, let's spread this as far and wide as we can so that hopefully anybody with tips on Heidi's whereabouts come forward. 
whether it's a sighting, whether it's information they heard through other people. So make sure that you share this link, share this video, and give it a thumbs up on your way out to help that algorithm to spread it. Thanks again for tuning in with me on today's case, guys. I hope you enjoyed the coverage. I will keep you updated as more information becomes available. Until the next case, stay safe.